Yeah. Oh, yeah. whoa. <laughs> cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers. Hey, Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, The Adventures of Craft Beer and Baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode 47 for March 23rd, 2021. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. And as always, we'd appreciate if you subscribe and turn on those notifications. First off, thanks to our Patreon supporter, Jason Schaefer. Thank you for being on the cleanup hitter level. And our super supporter, Cowboy Jack Durango, a power hitter and, uh, and a great dude. Uh, nonetheless, I mean, he doesn't have to be a Patreon supporter for us to put him over. He's uh, tremendous. So thank you, for Cowboy Jack, for, for being out there and supporting us. If you would like to support us here at the Beer Baseball blog, if you like what we're doing, check out our Patreon at Beer Baseball. Uh, we also have an Etsy store where you can buy uh, little uh, uh, stickers and magnets and uh, other. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you got your beer coaster there, Kevin. And uh, Angelo has it in the background as a prop. I love it. Um, my, but my yeah, pin's somewhere on my jacket here. That's right. And we got pins. We got all that stuff. So more <laughs> coming on that. Um, I'll have some announcements here and uh, maybe next week, uh, maybe after. Uh, but yeah, we're a lot of stuff coming. Yeah. So let's go to the lineup card for today. First up, he is the VP of content development here at the Beer Baseball blog, Angelo Trinidad. Welcome. Hey, Michael. Hey, Kevin. Hey, everyone. Thank you guys for tuning in. 47, 48, if you count the pilot, episode strong. Uh, and uh, we're not stopping. We're going to keep trucking uh, forward and uh, keep putting out the content. Thank you guys for your support, not only with uh, Beer and Break, uh, on Saturdays, but with uh, my Monday Night Rip series on my Facebook Live. So uh, thank you guys for um, indulging uh, in opening packs with me. Yeah, and who knew that all this would come uh, from a lockdown and uh, a global <laughs> pandemic. So um, I, I would say that, you know, bring it on. Let's let's bring it on. But no, let, let's let's get back to the ballpark. Let's get back to the brewery. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take that uh, um, disruption for a while. Um, Next, he is the field correspondent and senior research analyst at the Beer Baseball blog, Kevin Lyon. Welcome. Hey, great to be here. We're at like, what, like 11 months of this? Like this over 11 crazy. months? Like, what? Crazy. How's this crazy. happening? We're almost at baseball season. Wait, what? Ba yeah. What? <laughs> I yeah, feel like it's... we've been doing this longer than a regular baseball season now at this point. So that's good. <laughs> yes, uh, we're um, we don't we don't take the uh, we don't have an off season. We just go nope. show, we, we plow we're, we're through. Like, we're like the wrestlers. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Off oh, breath, brother. Only injuries get us down, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, injuries so and pandemics, but we we fought against the pandemic, and we're still here. <laughs> yeah, and 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 the saying is, uh, uh, injury creates opportunity, right? Um, you know, the guy, the guy that goes on the DL and then also like, uh, what was it? Uh, Gehrig for Pip, Brady for Bledsoe. That's from the, yeah. uh, cheap seats from, uh, uh, yeah. the Sklar brothers. Or I'm trying to think of like the worst example of a guy getting hurt. Like, got, like someone getting hurt, falling down the stairs or something. There's some really dumb injuries <laughs> in the history of baseball. Oh yeah. I think it was Tom got, got hurt riding a motorcycle or dirt bike. I think That's it was. Right. Yeah. Oh. Cespedes, uh, same thing. I think yep. he was riding a motorcycle. So yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here, but, and, uh, you know, let's start out with what are you drinking tonight? So we'll start with Angelo. All right. So uh, I've had on the show before the Sierra Nevada hazy little thing IPA. Uh, this is the Sierra Nevada big little thing Imperial oh. IPA. Ooh. This is a hearty 9.0 uh, ABV. Uh, with an IBU of 45, um, and it's described as a flexing a full malt body, restrained sweetness, and tropical hop flavors of mango, grapefruit, and tangerine. Cheers, boys. Yeah, Cheers. That, looks, that looks awesome. And, and that's a 16.9, right? That's, uh, a, that's a bigger can, right? This is uh, three point, oh wait, this is a pint, so three, 32 fluid ounces. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Ooh. I was, I gasped when I, when I actually put this in my notes, I'm like a 9% beer for Angelo. <laughs> I know. <laughs> my God. Hey, Our baby's all grown up. Like 
I, I wouldn't it's, hear him say like a really high IBU, but that's not that high for an Imperial IPA. That's sure, why sure. that's what, what drew me to it. I was like, wow, nine percent ABV with only a forty-five IBU. Yeah. You typically don't see that. I'll Most beers in the eight and a half to nine percent ABV range are somewhere in the 70, 80 IBU. Yeah. But Where did you is, find that, Angelo? Uh Ralph's actually. All right. And, and that's individual or is it a four pack or individual? Okay. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah, and that's um, good. It actually has seven hops in it. Uh, wow. Mag Magnum, Crystal, Chinook, Idaho 7, Columbus, Cascade, and, and Mosaic. So obviously it's going to be hoppy, So, um, but it's it, it doesn't come off as hoppy, right? No, not at all. That's amazing. It, it, it even says on here, it's like a uh, big little thing defies brewing logic, which is uh, yeah. so uh, very interesting. I'll have to check that one out. I don't think I've had that one. I haven't either. I think that's pretty new because there was the other... It's the hazy little thing originally, right? That was the, hazy, the yeah, one hazy little thing. A hazy little thing is what they're primarily known for, which right. is one of my absolute favorites. I do like that torpedo. I haven't had that one in a while, the torpedo IPA. Oh, that, I would really hear like Stone Cold put that over. I go, let me try it. I'm like, wow, that was such a really good IPA. Awesome. So, Kevin, I mean, you always have very, very um, – I, 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 not hoppy. Um, and, uh, I mean, but more like when we say fruity beers, you know, like tropical is usually like a flavor we have, but you usually, uh, zero in on stuff like this. Well, so like apple pie. Well, well, the thing is, I actually, this is how long I've had this beer. Uh, this was given to me as a Christmas present. Wow. They had, this is one of those ones. that was a six pack at Trader Joe's around Christmas. I'm like, oh, I should try that. And then one of my coworkers bought me a few beers and this was one of them. And I'm like, I got to get this on the show. And, and then, you know, a couple weeks ago we had, unfortunately we did the, it wasn't the best circumstance. We did the show for Johnny because I was planning to drink it that night. And I'm like, and then last week it's three sixteens. I got a stone cold. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. So I'm like, all right, now I can have this tonight. So this is by flying dog brewery. They're out of uh, Maryland, I believe. And it really says apple pie, blonde ale. We're also ready 7.2%. Wow. So, and it definitely smells it? like apple pie. And, um, how is it? I'm going to try it right now. It's I'm not, I'm not super into it, but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I will enjoy hey, as much as I can. It happens. And right? drinking, I remember I'm not a big apple person in general, but I'm like, I'll try it. Does you know? it taste like a, like a angry orchard cider or is it? It's but with more hops. With more hops. Know? Okay. Yeah. It, it's a blonde I, ale, so that's good. That at least why I make it better. I was just surprised by yeah. the percentage on this. I was like, 7 2. Yeah. It's only 20 IBU, so there's not a lot of hops in it, but like, I'm like, oh, it smells good. But I took the first tip. I'm like, eh, it's good, but I'm like, not blown away by it. But that could be just me, too, you know? Yeah. If you don't like apple, like, I would love apple. So I, I probably like it more than you. Um, yeah. The, you probably, did you guys like, you guys like more of the vanilla? um flavors like the cream I love the yeah i love the cali cream in yeah yeah so that that's that's one that i probably yeah. wouldn't i really to. like the orangeicle version better the orangeicle one i at the cream the, the cali cream the original one i'm like oh it's, it's kind of like i feel about this one it's good but i wouldn't be going on a way to get it but i really enjoyed the orangeicle version or, orange was good i i like the i like the vanilla a little bit better because i tried it on nitro oh mm. that sounds great yeah yeah excellent yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. So yeah. for those of you that aren't familiar what what nitro is, it's uh, they put uh, is it not nitrous oxide, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. And so it, it it the the foam is actually it has a kind of a texture to it that makes it really kind of um, you know robust and foamy, um, mm -hmm. uh, but not over. I mean it it, right. it works with beer. So um, a lot of uh, like like porters and uh, they they'll be on nitro and stuff like that. So uh, that's I mean. Even this one on uh, nitro would be very interesting as well. Yeah, I agree. a different I agree. kind of taste. Um, hey, Michael, real quick, I gotta put this over. I don't know if you see this. Look what I got in the mail for a friend oh, of mine out in Pennsylvania. That's tight. Wow. So for those who don't know what Yingling is, it is actually America's oldest brewery. They've been around since I believe eighteen. I was looking it up earlier. Eighteen uh, twenty-nine. So even this brewery is older than me. That tells you how old this brewery is. <laughs> barely, 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 barely. It's close, give or take a century, you know. But uh, I was just looking them up because that's just interesting because you can't find them out here. And I guess the only distributed states where they're able to produce for the entire state, they're based out of um, Pennsylvania. If I look on here, Pottsville, wherever that is. I'm sure it's somewhere between Philly I've and Pittsburgh. Yeah. There's a lot of states in between there. Whenever I go out to Tennessee, I make sure to at least have one. 
it's a basic logger, but it's good for what it is. And looking it up, it's actually uh, 2018 by volume of sales. It was the largest craft brewery. Wow. Sixth largest overall brewery and largest wholly American owned brewery in the United States. Yeah, I'll have to ask yeah. my friend Paul. I get my uh, friend Matt in Pennsylvania out there, and I was like, yeah, I'll gladly oh, wear this on the show. That's they, have it, cool. they, have a, they have it in Florida, too. Yeah. Most places in Florida. Actually, uh, the WWE Thunderdome is moving to the Yingling uh, Center in uh, University Oh, of no kidding. Central Florida. <laughs> no, uh, how interesting. I didn't know that the Yingling Center, wow. wow yeah, they're moving up to the big time after almost 200 years. Yeah. Um, and, uh, to close our thought on this um uh, I actually went to the Flying Dog. Flying Dog has a, a place in Camden Yards. They have oh, wow. their own. Uh, yeah, okay, that makes bar. sense because they're in Maryland, it says. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I went to that. And um, uh, this also says bursting with classic fall flavors like sweet baked yeah. apple and traditional warming spices. This 7.2 ABV uh, Blonde Ale tastes like it came straight out of Grandma's Kitchen. Oh, so, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, very, very cool. Um, this is my beer tonight. Oh, uh, it is the nice. hazy IPA series. This is for February and April. This is from Modern Times Beer. This is the Caliban, uh, six point ABV, forty five IBU, um, three hops in this one. This is Nelson, Crystal, and Simcoe, um, and it says uh, an IPA uh, for a uh, let's see, bright tropical fruit berries, lemon, and uh, crisp citrus. That's guaranteed to improve your immediate point of view. Uh, I will I definitely agree. And when I smell this, oh my God, th this smells like, um, you, you know, when you, like Kevin and I uh, do this all the time. You know, when you just walk into a brewery and you just get that great smell, this is exactly the smell that I, that we know that we're in a, in a great place. Yeah. We're just going, okay. Yeah, this is going to be good. tough to have less than five beers here. <laughs> this is exactly this. It's so like juicy um, and uh, really great. Uh, like the citrus is in it is yeah. amazing. Um, the, the upcoming one. So this is the first hazy IPA series um, uh, for this year. So February through April. Oh, the next one is in that. May through July. It's called the Electrojet. Okay. In August uh, to October, it's Wizard Nebula. Mm. And uh, in November through January is the Terrabellum. So um, I'm going to try to get all of them this year. Uh, and this this is my second one I've had this year. So um, it, Is that Trader Joe's? Because I've seen that can before somewhere. I want to say that's where I've seen it. I got this one. Uh, there's a place down the street. It's more of an independent okay. liquor store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I haven't gotten into anything big. But um, right. yeah, usually the, uh, the artwork like jumps off so yeah, it, yeah usually when it has this like um really kind of really cool artwork it, it usually yeah is. that's the cool thing because you know usually the regular beers it, it's more just a plain simple thing you know to where you gotta make sure you know what you're getting too you know because you'll have you'll have the same kind of writing this for everything and he's got to right. look at what color to figure out what to get right all right, so before we move on, I wanted to give a shout out to the people in the comments. Um, Daily Sports Talk, how you doing? Yeah, Cowboy good. Jack Durango, yes, thank you for joining. Bubble Pug, uh, so loyal, so loyal. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to get some brewers for you tonight, definitely. Uh, David is in the chat. All Angels Podcast, thank you so much for joining tonight. Uh, Chad M, thank you for joining. Uh, Colin is here. And uh, do we have anybody new? Yeah, if you're new, uh, say hi to us. We, we'd love to know if you're um, if you're out there. Just you know, just say hello and and uh, let yourself be known. And uh, definitely, well, uh, if we could ask uh, everybody, hey, tell a friend, um, join you, uh, and 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 we, we have a really great community that we're growing here. Um, but not a silent majority. We want you to. Uh, to speak up, and uh, we're again, we're gonna have a lot of fun things. We want to do a lot more things and involve everybody. Um, so, so definitely let us know, like something that you would like to see. I know that the baseball card thing has been really popular. Um, Angelo's been doing that on Saturdays. He's been doing his Facebook Live. Uh, we we might be doing some more of that, and uh, so let us know uh, in the comments um, what you'd like to see and uh, and what. And, uh, and maybe it's a trivia night. Maybe it's. Uh, um, you know, we have different beers. Uh, we all preview like maybe three beers or something like that. And think <laughs> it's it stupid. Who knows? Daddy. Um, but that, that'd be a lot of fun. So definitely, uh, definitely let us know. Or we can, we can stream my new favorite pastime, 
which is drinking and browsing eBay. <laughs> oh God, oh, that's, we, I don't like that idea. We, hey, we, yeah, we we can boys. watch uh, Angelo spend his whole paycheck. Oh yeah, there boys. we go. It, it, boys, it's dangerous. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's dangerous. It is. It is. All right. So this is. Hey, this one day. more thing. This uh -oh. was an accident, by the way. Oh yeah. I saw it. Oh, it's broadcast. Mention it. I put my hat on. Also, I see him like, oh no, we're matching tonight. Yep. Wait, we both are the exact same day. This is the high different Mavericks who was in the California league and they finished up. I want to say in 2016 and their last day, we both got hats and I'm like, Oh, I'm like, I haven't worn this one in a while. And I yep. obviously it's not the same thing. Regrettably, we didn't buy this. They were selling pants of the players Jersey. You could buy just the pants part. Sorry. We didn't buy any of those. Yeah. Kevin oh, had we didn't pants. Buy the machine either. The Kevin had pants awesome. at night. So uh, we didn't have to buy him uh, baseball pants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is this day in baseball history for March 23rd. March 23rd, 1951, Brooklyn signs a 21-year lease with the city of Vero Beach oh. to use an abandoned naval base as their spring training facility, which will become known as Dodger Town. The site will be the team's Grapefruit League home through the 2008 season with exhibition games taking place at the 6,000 seat Holloman Stadium. Now, uh, I was looking at this and doing uh, my due diligence because I, I remember hearing about uh, Dodger Town and, you know, how, um, how, how actually it was, there was always a lot of footage from it. It always seems like a, a cool destination for spring training. Um, you know, back before, you know, years before I was born, obviously, but, um, but it seemed like a really cool, um, thing. And, and what I didn't know was, um, it actually, uh, Dodgers president branch Ricky sought to create a baseball campus where players could, uh, live and play together. So it sounds very familiar to kind mm -hmm. of what spring training is now. Now they double up, um, right. as well. But this is this is where I kind of get it, it. I didn't realize how kind of really historic this is because um, Dodger Town was the South's first racially integrated spring training camp, where 600 plus players from Brooklyn Dodgers, 26 uh, minor God. league teams played. How is that possible? That's 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 what it says in the sign. 26 yeah, minor I see league it right teams. There. Wow. <laughs> So, um, and this is where Jackie Robinson and Roy Campanella uh, were the first to train there. So, uh, very historic um, uh, site. And I didn't realize how, how historic it was. I, I remember hearing about it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, And it seemed pretty cool. Because I'd always see like stuff like this. I actually have a picture on the wall that someone had actually drawn. It, it's very similar to this. Um, and I, I, the thing that, that takes me, cause I, I love signs like this and, you know, it's pretty cool. Cause Vero beach kind of reminds me of like what Palm Springs was here mm -hmm. in California. It seems yeah. like this kind of remote area that has its own kind of like, uh, kind of history around spring training. But the thing that I, I want to call your attention to wouldn't it have been awesome to be a kid and go to Dodger town summer camp, uh, uh, for boy for only for boys though. Uh, poor girls can't, can't go to <laughs> Dodger town summer camp. Um, but, uh, that would have been amazing. Wow, it's a month. That's a month looking at that too. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, that would have been, uh, absolutely amazing to, to go to. Um, did you guys ever go to any like, uh, baseball camps or, or hear about anything like that? No, uh, I never, I never, I never played baseball. Like when I was younger in little league, I went to I went to a ton of basketball camps, like when I was a, a kid. Okay, um, and uh, but never, never a baseball camp. But, yeah, sport, but sport, 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 sport camps are are fun. Uh, my Lucas, my oldest, he did a he did a summer baseball day camp, um, and gosh, like that week of just drills and and reps and stuff, he got so much better just from oh, that. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. yeah. I mean, I remember them. Even in Arizona, I mean, it was super hot, but um, yeah, I only remember them being like a day, let alone a month. That would have yeah. been. <laughs> I, I was like, love whoa. It. Well, they can get away with that in Florida, but in like Arizona, God, you couldn't do more than a day. No, You'd be like no. dying out in, in mid no. in midsummer like that. Yeah, I remember doing a soccer one um, when I was like ten. And I, I literally thought I was going to die because you know it was like almost uh, like a, it was like almost like at noon and stuff like that. It was like oh. ridiculous. Yeah, oh. it, I thought it was my uh, my last day on this earth when I did it. 
March 23rd, 1959, the Cardinals trade Sam Jones to the Giants for first baseman outfielder Bill White and third baseman Roy Jablonski. The right-hander, who is called Toothpick Sam by his t- teammates, will be the <laughs> runner-up for the Cy Young Award this season, posting a 21-15 and 15 record along wow. with an ERA of 2.83 for San Francisco. Now, the question uh, to my esteemed panel here, why is Sam Jones, uh, as you see there uh, on the little caption right there, he pitched a no-hitter in 65 or 55 mm-hmm. uh, versus Pittsburgh, why was this significant? It actually has a historical significance. A no hitter he pitched in 55? Yeah. It was at Wrigley Field of all places. Hmm. Gosh. I think about this. Wait, no hitter at Wrigley Field. Is it the first no hitter pitched at an alternate site? Uh, that's a good, that's a good guess. Um, but no, cause you mean Wrigley in Chicago. Oh yeah. In Chicago, not yeah, Wrigley yeah. in LA. See, I could have tricked you there. Right. Right. Well, Wrigley either way, it was, against, it was against Pittsburgh though. Yeah. Yeah. You never, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was playing, he was playing for Chicago. The Cubs. Oh, right. Yeah. I see the card there. It's in Chicago. See, it threw me off. I saw Indianapolis. Oh, I didn't there. see that. Didn't was he the first ro- look at it that I'm going to say, was he the first rookie to ever get a no hitter? Ooh, you're, you're getting closer. Ooh. You're getting closer. No, it couldn't have he's been a the, rookie. He's the first something. He's the first something. I like that. He's the first something. Or <laughs> something. Not rookie, but. Uh-oh. Oh, it's his first game. No, no. Ah, that would have been good. That would have been good. I think his first star as a pitcher. Nope. Well, well, the answer is he was the first African American to oh, throw a hey, no hitter. I was gonna say that, but I I didn't know picture, I didn't I, could, I couldn't tell. So I, I yeah, didn't want to make that guess. And it's funny because like even in even in where I found this information, it did, had made no mention of that. So I actually looked him up, and I'm like, oh, that's cool, toothpick, uh, toothpick Jones, right? Um, toothpick uh, Sam. Toothpick Sam, Sam, sorry, yeah, uh, and, right. and so I'm just like, oh, that's a that's an interesting nickname. I've never heard of that. So I looked him up, and I'm like, wait a second, this guy is like, yeah. He, 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 and actually, I remember there's actually footage of this live game on YouTube, oh, wow. and uh, oh, wow. I'll, I'll, sh- I'll share it. It's actually very interesting, and they they show like other there's other clips with they show like you know still wow. footage of it, but it actually the broadcast of it, I actually watched the end of it. It was amazing. Um, and it said the pace of the game was so much different back then. It was a very oh, yeah. interesting, uh, but yeah, he was the first African-American to uh, throw no hitter. So, um, yeah, they, they just kind of glaze over that and he had a, he had a pretty yeah. decent career and, uh, uh well, actually his numbers, young. Yeah. his numbers were actually like, I mean, like he, he either won or lost. He was almost like 500 for the season uh, or yeah. for the, for his career. But, um, yeah, a very significant person in baseball history. Yeah, right on. March 23rd, 1963, on the day he is fitted for his big league Orioles uniform, 23-year-old Steve Dalkowski pitching in an exhibition game against the Yankees, feels something pop in his elbow, losing feeling in his hand while facing Bobby Richardson. The fireballer from New Britain, Connecticut, who once struck out 24 batters in a minor league game, will never appear in the major leagues. Now, this goes back to episode 19. Yeah, as I was said, I know we talked about him, but we I'm glad about you him. Got a number. Good job. So Angelo, I'm going to throw this the question to you. See if you, you retained your baseball knowledge. Steve Dalkowski is the inspiration for what movie character? Oh yeah, there we go. Oh gosh. Mm. Maybe in the chat knows. Throw it yeah. out there. Throw it out there for us. Because I laugh because I'm like, I'm totally spacing out on the character's name right now, even though like, I yeah. totally know who it is. But I'm like, <laughs> like what the hell's his name again? Mm. I know I'm going to kick myself for not knowing this because I'm immediately going to say I knew that when you say what it was. Um, was this... Uh, 
I because I remember this conversation specifically. Was this for the scout? Oh no! No, no. no. I, I I need a buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> he was actually the inspiration for Nuke Nuke Lalouche <laughs> in Nuke. Bull Durham. Bull. The uh, I was gonna, that was my Bull Durham was my was my other guess. Yep. And, Not really. Uh, I'm just saying. Yeah. Let's try to save face. Chad M got there it. Go. Definitely. Good job, Chad. That goes all I the way back to. I'm like Nuke. Nuke. What's his last name? Labouche. There we go. And that goes all the way back to episode 19. I actually looked at because I got, I had to get the same picture. Right um, on. But yeah, that's uh, that that was the inspiration from him. And, and the legend of of Steve Dalkowski is, is 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 it's insane. Like it, some of it has to be made has to be made up. But um, you know, like. <laughs> It, 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 just, it just all it, it seems it's preposterous a lot of the stuff but it, yeah. I, from what i knew you know obviously you know he threw his arm out so um it, but it was a shame that he never got to play in yeah. the major leagues at once march 23rd 1973 the cardinals play three cruise brothers cirillo hector and jose all nine innings in the outfield during the team's nine to two spring training victory over New York at Al Lang Field. The trio Puerto Rican siblings who personally outscore outscore the Mets first first uh, let's see bat first, second, third in the Redbirds lineup, making all three outs in the eighth and uh the first yeah. and eighth frames. Wow. <laughs> that photo is amazing. Because I'm looking going, that says Calhas, right? Or whatever the city is in Puerto Rico. I'm like, yep. Awesome. I'm that like, was oh the God. only picture I could find of all of them together. But that's an what? awesome photo. Oh my that's gosh, what a great! Photo. How did they not document that 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 photo at the game? Like when all three of them played. Oh, yeah, yeah. Totally. I know. Yeah, I I forgot that Jose Cruz even played for uh, the Cardinals. I I didn't remember him being around that long because I remember yeah. him more in the early to mid eighties. He was a heck of a player. Yeah, for the Astros and like like in the like eighty like during that during their runs with like you know yeah. Mike Scott and uh, yeah. Nolan Ryan and all that. So is this the um, is that like the the Jose Cruz Jr. Is that one of the the kids? I guess that would be yeah yeah. yeah. Be, I I believe he yeah. would he would be involved in that yeah definitely yeah yeah I, yeah, I mean I'm assuming he's yeah he's his son yeah. March 23rd, 1978, the Mets deal 34-year-old awesome. Bud Harrelson to Philadelphia for cash and a minor league call-up, Freddie Andrews, an infielder who will never play another game in the major leagues. The popular shortstop, as a 12-year veteran, could have vetoed the trade, but chose to go to Philadelphia to play for a contending team. So um, Philadelphia wound up uh, winning the World Series in 1980. Mm -hmm. So he was a part of those yeah. teams, but I like to right. think that he was actually um, more famous for uh, <laughs> for a fight that he had at second base at Shea Stadium with Pete Rose. Um, I, I I tried to get footage of this, but I I actually didn't wasn't able to get it at the time. Uh, but this one, oh my God! Like this this was crazy. This is a crazy uh, dust up, if you will. It literally a dust up. Yeah, Thank yeah. You for saying that. That, yeah, good fun. Yeah, it's like Pete Rose just went in that, into the second base. And it, it, there are so many, like, instances of, of this from, like, you know, the 70s, even 60s, My where gosh. all people had takeout plays. There's just one of Hal McRae uh, taking out, I, I think it was, um, who was the guy for the Yankees that was shortstop? Whatever, but, but he basically, like, does, a, like, a barrel roll into his, like, legs. It's, like, it's Ooh. nuts. Yeah. I'm laughing because I just see that hair that he has. And if you ever watched the Incredible Hulk, he has like that loop ring hair. And I'm yeah, just very big and green, like any second. The way he's just grabbing him, but he's just like, but like, leave me alone. Yes. 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 Because you, don't you know like what? Like it, if this was, he saw what Pete Rose did to Ray Fossey and he's like, whoa. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't touch me. I'm good. <laughs> Well, if you if you look here, Bud Harrelson looks like like a substitute teacher here. So yeah, um, yeah, he's taking it, trying he's to take on the out. Left. I I don't know if he had to shave his mustache to hide from the police and that you know in the in that photo on the right and wear the sunglasses. <laughs> I'm just wanted for something, but I'm like, yeah. you don't wear glasses like that in ba when you're playing baseball. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, collar and el uh, collar and yep. elbow tie up right Basically. here. That, that's exactly. Definitely. Yeah, and um, uh, what's it? Uh, Hulk Hogan wrestled Andre the Giant in Shea Stadium. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in 1980. Uh, yes, and, sir. And uh, wasn't wasn't there another Shea Stadium wrestling? 
There was two shows because they did when uh, Antonio Inoki fought Muhammad Ali. That was in Tokyo, but they showed it on cir- on closed circuit at various spots, and Shea Stadium was one of them. Oh, right. But on. it did really bad. So to try to make, <laughs> try to make up, get some of the crowd there. They actually had Andre the Giant wrestle boxer Chuck Webner. Oh, that's right. That's so right. Chuck Webner is the inspiration for the Rocky films there because he once unexpectedly fought Muhammad Ali to a fifteen round decision. Yeah. yeah so yeah, the, you're so Inoki and Muhammad Ali were was shown via closed circuit television. That was on. Uh, that was at Showdown at Shea, yeah, June 25th, 76. 1976. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Andre and Hogan wrestled. Uh, that was in 1980. At Shea, 1980. We have yeah. August 9th, 1980. That the was first, the Zabisco first showdown. San Martino. That drew yeah, like a lot of people. It was like yeah, over 30,000, I think. Yeah, the first showdown at Shea was on September 30th, 1972. Main event was. Uh, Pedro Morales and Bruno San Martino, and oh, they fought yeah. to a curfew draw, 75 minutes and five seconds. Wow. Yeah. In wow. comparison to Hogan and Andre, who went seven minutes and 48 seconds. That's about right. <clears throat> yeah. Am- amazing how we can take a Bud Harrelson reference <laughs> and turn it into uh, a, a way more than it should be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Only on the Beer Baseball broadcast. You get uh, this kind of information that you'll never need to know. Nicely done. <laughs> March 23rd, 1990, Howard Spira, who was paid $40,000 by George Steinbrenner in January to dig up dirt on outfielder Dave Winfield, is arrested uh, by the FBI for trying to extort money from the Yankees owner. Commissioner Faye Vincent bans the boss from play, uh, from playing any role in the team's day-to-day operations for 30 months. Very interesting sentence right there. Upon yes. learning his arrangement with the Bronx Gambler. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't even remember hearing that story. That's hilarious. I know. It, it, I've it, never it, heard of that one. I've oh, never heard of this one either. It's very, very interesting. It's great that I actually found a picture of it as well. Yeah. And to end it off, March twenty three, uh, March twenty oh, third, yeah. uh, two thousand nine. Thanks to the Mariners' Ichiro Suzuki two out, two run single in the top of the tenth inning, Japan defeats South Korea five to three to win its second consecutive World uh, World Baseball Classic title. South Korea, the reigning Olympic champion, had tied the game at three three in the bottom of the ninth inning on Lee Bum Ho's two out RBI single off Japanese closer Yu Darvish. In front of an enthusiastic okay. crowd of 54,846 at Dodger Stadium, that did include that number does include me. I was gonna I say, I've it. actually, yeah. it's weird hearing you, Darvish, as a closer. I was like, what closer? Yeah, yeah, and he, he I'm, was I'm, uh, a real dominant closer as well. Yeah, I've never been to a World Baseball Classic game. I'm def- I definitely wanted to do that at some point uh, when that comes back. Yeah, yeah, I was fortunate enough to go to. Was that semifinal I went with you two, Michael and San Diego? Yeah, that was f- that was four years ago. Yeah, gosh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> great. I'm like, I, I've been to two finals, uh, yeah. and then I'm I'm kick, kick myself for not going to 2006. I would have gone last year, right. uh, but uh, but it got uh, wiped out. But yeah, these are so fun because um, the whole game, like people were like chanting. There, uh, I mean, yeah. I couldn't believe I what people were getting in. Non-American game. I gotta watch the other countries. Because they seem to be, I mean, sorry, America, but you know, the like a Japan or Korea, they seem to be more enthusiastic about it than the American fans. Well, just, I well, mean, the, you could, say, you, you could say, say the same thing up until probably 2009 for the American participation in the World Baseball Classic, the players. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't, I don't think, I don't necessarily think it was taken seriously. It certainly wasn't taken no. seriously in 2000. What was six. The, Six, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. No, they they definitely walked through it. And was remember, it's spring training for a lot of these guys. Right, so they, yeah, yeah. they didn't want to like hurt themselves and put themselves out. They, I mean, these are like playoff games at the, in like spring training. So yeah, um, yeah. And, and and the one the thing I loved about it was it was like uh, there was a point uh, that uh, where I you know we looked around and we're just like like we're we're. As as a as a American, I was in a minority. You know, like I, I'm sure there was Americans there, but it's like yeah. there was people, there representation from from Korea, uh, from Japan, and you would think that you were in another country. And it was like a World Cup game. It was amazing. Yeah. It was so so much fun. That's awesome. So much fun. 
Um, but yeah, we'll we'll definitely uh, obviously make the, a point to to go to these things uh, when, oh, when yeah. we can. And hopefully Olympic baseball. And if you you know when it comes back oh, to Los man. Angeles, yeah, that was what the Olympic uh, qualifiers were supposed to be last year as well. So yeah, um, yeah that yeah everything. Yeah, I did, up. I I regrettably didn't get to do any. I mean, I was you know. Oh, I, I'll say it for real. I'm actually was nine. I'm not 109 or whatever, but I didn't get to go to anything in the uh, 84 Olympics goes here in LA, unfortunately. Right. Oh yeah. That would have been a lot of fun too. Yeah. Oh, it's also brought up that uh, Pete Rose yeah. is a WWE hall of famer. There you go. Yep. See, it all comes full circle <laughs> before major league baseball. So he, that's the yep. hall of fame he's in. Yeah. <laughs> King. There you go. So let's oh. do baseball card pack wars. Uh, we are doing, uh, uh, stadium club from 1992, right? And, yep, uh, sir. tops, uh, yep. series one, uh, 2021. Look at this Kevin in the cellar, Kevin, our reigning champion all the way down Two in the cellar. straight weeks of just the big L. <laughs> well, I was 0-4 last week as well. Angelo coming up in the world. Look at that. It's yep. uh, 351, 331, 321. Very close. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so we all we're, – we're actually tied for the same losses, but, Angelo, uh, those four that you missed are actually uh, – you know, you you could have been you could have been on first place at this point. Hey, yeah, I know. Close. It's all right. <laughs> There's plenty of time. I missed. And, you know what? I missed the week. And I'm going to be missing some coming up soon too. So it's not going to. Oh, there you go. There I you missed go. a week last year, and I still want it. So it's all right. Well, if you would like to play, have someone play proxy for you, you yes. can do that. Yeah. Okay. I'll, maybe I'll do that instead of putting it on the guest line. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. You you can well well well. Let's let's do a vote right now. Do we vote that uh, you can make a proxy? Someone can play for you that week. I have no objections to that. Okay. I would think it's up to Angelo. It's his. It's his, it's his deal. Yeah, you you have to. We'll we'll say that you if you waved it off or whatever. If you wanted to go to the guest or yours. Yeah, well, we'll we'll have it go to mine. That way, I mean, they, I mean, instead of the guest line. So there you go. All That's right. fun. Okay, here are the baseball card pack war rules. Uh, screenshot that. Well, we'll walk you through it. We've done this before. All right, so let's do it. Let's uh, let's. Uh, I always do that. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Angela, since so you're coming up in the world, let's let's right. let you go first. So we'll uh, switch it up and start with 2021 first. 2021 oh. Top Series one. And the more I more of this product I open, the the more and more I love this product, man. Like it's such a it's such an awesome design, um, and uh, I love the foil stamp for the 70th anniversary. Oh, yeah. So uh, I can't wait for series two to come out and then, uh, you know, subsequently update series, but yeah. All right. So we got David, is that Bote or Bo yep. Bote? David Bote. We got John Lester, back to back Cubs. Starling Marte. This is uh, one of my favorite cards, a playful bout of juniors, Ronald Acuna Jr. and Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Uh, Zach Britton. We have Willie Adamas. We have former angel Matt Shoemaker. The cobbler. Uh, we have Fernando Tatis Jr. All right. You just go. got her today. Oh, yeah, Remember that's that? right. Yeah, I, I just saw a headline. I didn't see how bad it was. Yeah. I saw he got pulled out of a game. Yeah, Matt Olson. We have a uh, eighty. What is it? Eighty six. Oh, right Vlad on. Vladimir Guerrero. Vladimir Guerrero from the Expos. Kind of cool card. Very good. Yeah. And we have Alex Gordon. We have Wade Davis. Uh. Travis Darn De De Arnod. Mm -hmm. And wrapping it up, league leaders, you Darvish. There you go. Speak of the devil. All right, Kevin, he's you're not up. the devil. Come on. He's not a devil. <laughs> he is he is a Dodger fans. Dodger fans uh, hate him. Actually, oh, yeah. I, yeah, I yeah he he uh he hasn't done good in championship games in in Dodger Stadium, actually. Oh uh, World, yeah, the real baseball classic and game seven. <laughs> I really hey, like team one, though. hey, it's team one, at least, you know. All right, let's see here. We got Austin Hayes. 
Robbie Ray. Do it for the fans. Do it for the cutouts from the Chicago White Sox. <laughs> I, I, that's a pretty cool card there. I don't remember if I've seen that one before. That's cool. <laughs> All right, we got uh, Nico Goodrum. Rookie of Luis Patino. Brandon Drury. Mauricio Dubon. That's a good one. Uh, Cattell Marte. Javier Baez. Uh, Jock Peterson. Uh, Jacob DeGrom. And oh, so I uh, like Garrett Richards. There we go. Nice. Uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah. <laughs> and to close it out, finally got my auto. There oh, it is. look at that. Franklin Cologne, New York Mets. Oh, nice. Wow. There, there we go. There finally go. got it. I only have like four or five packs left. I was waiting to see how I was going to get it. Nailed Boom. it. Nicely done. Awesome. There you Adam go. wins. All right. Wow, Gets there off we go. The slide. Back. Nicely done. I'm back in the New York groove with this one. There you go, Michael. <laughs> That's you. I hope I can make one non 1970s reference today. That should be a goal for, for me. <laughs> I you pop me. That's good. Yeah. Sorry, Michael. You, you don't get to open a pack. Sorry about that. Blame Angelo because he went to go. He went with uh, 2021 first. Yep. All right. Let's go straight to it. Let's go to Stadium Club. Baseball, 1992. Listen to that foil. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, no brewers yet, though. No, I know. I know. We've only opened two packs. Sorry. There's plenty That's of time. True. That's true. My beer's going to sure. get warm, though. I'm sure there would have been a brewer in here, but no. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you're going to enjoy some uh, 1992 Stadium Club cards. Here we That's go. Always. I always do. off hot. Hot, I tell you. Okay. But this guy. Exactly what the dog said. Who? Tony, Tony is it Tony Romas? What, what is it? No, Tony Fossus. Oh, Fossus. Uh, what a shame. He was a brewer, but now he's a Red Sox in this guy. Ah, there you go. Oh. I thought it was Tony Roma's ribs. Gosh, no, man. I, yeah, I used to that. love going to Tony oh, Roma's, man. Heck yeah. Uh, that was like. Yeah, hey, some good cards in this pack, believe it or not. Here we go. Let's start with this guy here. Look at this guy. Cecil Fielder. There you there go. All right. All right. Keeping it going here. This is for uh, Mr. Top Gun Tawar, David Justice. That's right. I'm going to see how many players we can get that we actually know all three of us in a row here. And I think that streak is going to stop with Luis Quinones. Yeah, I remember him. I know, but I'm saying Angel's not going to know who he is. No, no I barely remember. I know who Victor Quinones is. <laughs> there you go. No club for me this week. Stars and bars. Willie McGee. There you go. There you go. Oh, oh my oh, God. As a giant. As a giant. Yeah. As that's a how giant. I remember still looking at as much of an alien as ever. We love him. Yeah. He played no. Um, too. Milt Keeler? Keiler? Oh, my gosh. Wow. I know. I, I'm like, I haven't seen this name since the 80s, in the wow. early 90s. Yeah. Um, speaking of people we don't know, Calvin uh, Jones. Calvin Jones. But for every guy like that, I can get a Hall of Famer like this guy right here. Barry Larkin. There you wow, go. Wow, that's a great card. Cool. So I, got some, I got Barry Larkin and Dave Justice. Got some actual players in here. Uh, but no Brewers, unfortunately. We got uh, Scott Bradley. Uh, Brent Main, I believe a former Olympian, if I remember correctly. Jeff Montgomery. This, this is an interesting one. Take a look at this jersey for John Burkett. So I'm guessing that's New York Giants. Oh, my wow. God. I don't, rem I don't remember them jersey. doing, like, those types of jerseys back then. Yeah, because it's on the San Francisco Giants here. So I'm like, that's got to be, like, Polo Grounds era New York Giants. That's cool. That's a very that nice picture cool. there. Uh, we got Walt Weiss. Previously mentioned on this show, Bob Tweaksbury. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, whatever his name is. Yeah. Closing out, Juan Gonzalez. There you yeah, go. Juan gone. Another solid player. All really right. good player for a few years there. Since I'm not going to get shut out with a with a relic or an auto, I might as well just go. <laughs> yeah, might as well. have fun. Because I have control of the of who can go. 
All right. There you go. This used to be my name in high school, Luis Mercedes. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Know, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I was like, you no, guys all I, the story. I'm there. kidding. This that. was my name, Scott Bullet. <laughs> ah, there you go. You look just like him. There's some good names. Um, gone with the wind, Brett Butler. Nice. Oh, there you go. <laughs> On the Dodgers. Uh, Chris uh, Hoyles. Actually, oh yeah, there you go. I was gonna say it was he's Fruit Loops. So that's Mickey Teldon was Fruit Loops, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, membership has its privileges, right there. Yeah, Kevin, don't you wish you were a member, bro? <laughs> I got one. I got members one. Only. Members only. I got one. This is I only Scott... have the real only jacket. I'll keep it at that. <laughs> Scott Hemmond. Okay. Nice uh, member. Right. Uh, oh, I'm this like Bruce has... Campbell. John will like this one. Kent Merker. Wow. Oh my gosh. A young Kent Merker. Look how yeah, young he is. Totally. Super oh my young. gosh. Oh, this is a cool this is a cool one. The Eck. Dennis Eckersley. Nice. Oh man. He's like, gonna just mount oh my Hall gosh. He's right gonna, there. So he's gonna murder somebody right there. Look at that focus. Woo! Um, he's thinking of he's thinking of Kirk Gibson on that one. Kevin Moss. The the uh, at this time was a was a big kind of prospect, right? Oh my gosh, he was like him and, and Dave Justice were like the two hottest players in baseball in like 1990s. So that's, this is like about a year removed from that. Uh, Dan Billardello, I don't remember him. He, I actually, I think he's Ooh. warming up the catch, uh, the pitcher right here. I've never, uh, yeah, <laughs> he has like I a catcher's knew. mitt on. <laughs> I know. Is he an actual catcher? Uh, is he catcher? I mean, yes, I'm assuming he is he actually. All right. Well, well yeah, he, if he's on the Padres, he's backing up Benito anyway. So it's like he's well, that, that's, play. that's very true. I was gonna say he he forgot all of his equipment, so he's he's doing with no, with no mask and no yeah no guards. Now this is very interesting. This is Casey Candell. So Angelo, I'm gonna teach you about this. Yep. This is um, yes. he we played, haven't talked about this. We, I, don't I thought we, we had to talk about this on the show. So um, if you see back here, he played for the Expo, so that that's where he kind of came to prominence, but. He's yeah. playing with the uh, Houston Astros here. Yep. Casey Candell can actually say his mom was a better baseball player than him. Wow. She was a legend in um, in women's baseball. Wow! Like during like during like the you know um, you know the the movie uh, League of Their Own. Like she was yeah that league. I can't remember yeah. the name of the league. The, yeah, she's like a Hall of Famer. Record. And yeah, then he, awesome. he so it's like um, yeah, that's isn't that crazy. Correct. The ribs, awesome. on him. The ribs on him. Mel Mel Hall. Uh, Gosh. Marvin Marvin Freeman. There's another. Uh, Brave. Uh, Gilberto Reyes. Uh, Brian uh, Bohannon, and lastly is uh, Tommy Gregg. Another uh, Brave. So wow. a lot of Braves in you this. You know one. what? This is getting ridiculous. We've had no brewers yet. My apple pie beer is going to be as warm as apple pie, but it's going to be a brewer soon. All right? All right. We're already halfway through. Stadium club. <laughs> Wah. Wah. I just want to – I got auto. I can't complain, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Ron Tingley. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, wow. my gosh. Over Angel. Barely. Uh, we have – Joe Bover, Craig Biggio. Hey, there we go. We have a uh, Travis Fryman. Oh yeah, yeah, he's a very underrated player. Membership has its privileges. There you go. Here we go. Albert Bell. Oh, there you there go. You. That's a not awesome Joey. Nineties name. It wasn't Joey. Ricky Jordan. Randy Bush. Lenny Harris. We have Tommy Green. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Matt A virtual Who in this pack. Matt, Matt Nope. Hey, no there we notes. go. Matt Nope. Except for Biggio. Sorry, Biggio. Yeah. This is a this is an awesome card. Roberto Alomar. There you go. Nice. So there we go. Oh, another Hall of Famer. Oh, here we go. Marquise Grissom. Cool. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> His son's in baseball. In, uh, 
prospect. Henry Rodriguez. Don Pell. <laughs> it should be his headshot. <laughs> yeah. And Mike Maddox. Oh, Mike, man. Oh, Mike, oh, uh, fo- uh, current current pitching coach for the uh, Cardinals. Oh, there no, we go. Uh, no Brewers. We're Jeez. 0 for no 6 Brewers today. No Brewers again. What the heck? Yeah, Bubble Pug. The Brewers are hiding again. Yeah. Uh, Taro, all, uh, Taro all gassed up tonight. Do yeah. we do we drink double on the wild card round? If uh, we, we might have to. We might have to. So, um, what, Kevin, are you in first? Yeah, I went first. Uh, Bob uh, Tweaksbury is 258. 258? Yes, sir. My high is Brian uh, Bohannon, uh, 297. Oh, wow. wow. I think it's a 300 card set. Oh, yeah. Just, that... Didn't you get the kill card last week, Angelo? Minus 268. 268. Right. So, there I will. There you go, Mike. Come on, Dragon. Winner, winner, something dinner. Augustus uh, fried chicken dinner. There you go. All right. So the wild card. Let's let's see what we're doing. Hey, what how about this? <laughs> uh, let's do uh I'm gonna go for short stops. Oh hmm. wow. Ooh. Let's see if we get any. Who knows? Okay. So very my... Oh, Big League Baseball. We haven't had that. I still have a few of those packs, and we haven't opened yeah. those in a while. Very good. Big League Baseball 2020. Let's do it. So we're looking for shortstops, and hopefully... We're looking for shortstops oh. and brewers. Yeah. Yes, for a sure. shortstop well, is, the, is the ultimate winner here. Oh, my gosh. That's a good start. Right what, a work. what a work. What a work. Who booked this? Watching full seven yeah. short stops. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, this is the uh, Zach Collins, uh, catcher, first baseman, uh, team card, or actually the run scored leaders. Shortstop, Dan is B. Swanson. Any of the run scores, run scored leaders, the shortstop, though? Uh, Rendon. Um, uh, Bellinger is not a shortstop, right? No, outfielder. The outfielder. There you go. So no. So two got two. Good job, catcher uh, JT Ramuto. This is uh, Eloy Jimenez, uh, outfielder. Outfielder Austin Riley on the Orange Parallel. Outfielder uh, Victor Robles. First baseman Jose Abreu, and. Uh, someone who, uh, Chad M, uh, t- said signed an exclusive yep. deal with Tops Trading Cards a couple days ago. This is Mike Trap. Yep. Oh, nice. So there you go. So two, two short stops. Who wants to go next? So no more Trout Panini cards, even though he's oh, in yeah, the NBA. I want to say that happened with Jordan back when he was playing basketball. Jordan didn't Jordan's sign with the he, 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 he was never part of the NBPA. So his okay. likeness was never used in any okay. NBA game, right? Except for his own games, yeah. right? Okay. So that's why it was always like um, same thing with Barry Bonds. He was never part of the MLBPA. Okay. There you go. And by the way, we uh, Bob did mention we uh, Orlando Arcia. That's what we really need. That's the winning card here. We're short and, stop. Yeah, that's a double. That's a double. That's the bonus. That's almost. That's almost like getting an auto or relic at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got here. All right, so I have Heritage High Number 2020 Baseball. Right on. I don't think we've seen this one yet on the show. It looks, it just, it looks just like Heritage, but it's just... Right. Good thing we're not doing High Number. I mean, good thing for you guys, because I would win. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. true. Because this is, this is 350. I think it's 350 to 700 is High Number. Hey, unless I have a Tops update or... Oh, no, sorry. It'd be Tops Series 2 in here. All right, pitcher from the Brewers. Get your hey. beers ready. Yeah, yeah. nice. Hey. Start. Nice start. Uh, Cleveland Indians pitcher James uh, Karinchak. Yeah, I can tell this is the high numbered series. <laughs> Twins pitcher Cody Stashak. Braves third base Johan Camargo. He's almost doing it like an announcer, third baseman. Yep. 
Brady. Right. <laughs> Outfield, Marcelo Zuna. There you go. Pitcher, Angels, Julio Tehran. No Blue longer Jays. An angel. Blue Jays pitcher, Shunya Maguchi. <laughs> <laughs> Padres, Brian Dozier, second base. Come Yankees. on, we got one. Calm down, guys. We yeah, got Yankees one. Yankees pitcher, Luis Sessa. <laughs> <laughs> Zero shortstops. <laughs> Oh. All right, Kevin. Man. All right, let's heat see what we got here, on. brother. See, that's an 80s reference. The heat uh, is on. on. Uh, so it's so I'm gonna need some help on this one. I got my Allen and Ginter six cards. Uh oh. So nice. Let's see what happens here. And I don't think this says positions. I'll have to like actually use my brain to be in the back. Positions be on the back. Oh, you know what sucks too? They have the other parallels. They're yeah. bent. The cards oh, are bent. What? Yeah, the whole corner is like bent. I don't know if you can tell. Oh my god! Oh no! What the hell? I know. I was like, what happened in this bag the last couple months? Jeez! <laughs> oh, there's not something valuable in here. Even having too many, uh, too uh, many apple coke. pies. <laughs> too many apple pies. I have like half of this. If that. <laughs> well, anyway, pitcher Roger Clemens, pitcher um, Jacob Degrom, Matt Olson. No. Wow, those things are bent. Buster, really. Buster Posey mini. Okay. This is the only one that's got that got safe. Yeah. So there we go. Uh, debut to remember Joey Gallo and Shane Bieber. So there you Dude, go. Man, if it was pitchers, it'd be super close. Oh, yeah. Man, I, I picked the right one. Well, congratulations. Thank Dang. you. Dang. <laughs> that's a bummer. Congratulations. Wow. Yeah. All I'm, right. So I'm just like. Uh, <laughs> That that's nuts, Kevin. Yeah, like what the hell? Kevin, watch those cor- watch those corners, dude. Corner, I'm like, get out of here, bit. Gosh, luckily you create, I, just, you create, I get that glass. Nothing worth. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah exactly. Alan Ginter is super art. cool looking. Um, it would yeah, be cool without, without the creases for sure. Jeez. Um, was, yeah, that, those are. Um, those I've been waiting so awesome. long to open those too, and that's what happened. Yeah, that's funny. That's what sucks, though. I mean, sometimes wow. when you when you get stuff, you know, it's still like, and then it's like, you don't know if they get like damaged during uh, when they, when they're signing them or when they're putting them in or in the yeah. processing or the. That's packaging. weird. <laughs> like, cause I'm like, what? It, it, it looked like they got like stepped on or something. That was yeah, really bizarre. that that was really deliberate. That was very that was angry. Because I got that. Tell. I know that's the one I got, but I got like two packs from that store by Angelo. I don't want to say the name just in case. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Okay. But yeah. Hey, Angelo, it looks like you need to, you need to get on all angels podcasts this week. And yeah. not this week. It'll be in a couple weeks actually. Oh man. Cause you get, you don't, don't go over Michael's back. Michael's back. Back again. Okay. Here we go. So baseball trivia. Let's test your knowledge of baseball, please. In the comments, um, let us know who you think that this is. It's actually multiple choice, so um, we'll, so we'll get to that. What pitcher hit a home run in his first time up in the major leagues and never hit another in his 21-year career? Your choices are. Now, this is from the eight the 1980s era, right? This is from so the- this is taken from uh, that 1986. Yeah, so it's uh, right there. So there's the quiz. And then what's on the back of this card is the answer. So um, this is from 1986 and it is card 16. And uh, your choices are Lindy McDaniel, Jim Cott, Hoyt Wilhelm or Gaylord Perry. That's a good that's tough. They did. They yeah. did a good job picking people on this one. I agree. I agree. I'm going to go not the obvious route and go go Hoyt Wilhelm. Oh, there you go. Okay. You, you know what's funny? That's who I was going to go with because... Well, you can't. Okay. <laughs> oh, I had a logical reason, too. I'll tell you why. Because he, I know him more for being a reliever, so he wouldn't get Ooh. nearly yeah. as many at bats. Well, so that's what I was going to... I remember gonna go early in his career... One. What? Well, that in, Remember, that it's in, his first at bat. I know. Also, I'm just saying he might have been a, a he might not have been a reliever right away. 
Well, that you know and I, mean? also, I know he played a long time. Well, that also in a starting pitcher pitching or having a 21 year career, not likely. Yeah, exactly. Well, that I mean, but that's why I'm saying they did a good job on this list because like Jim Cotton, Gil, and Perry definitely played for a long time. Yeah. So, I, I, for once, I'll, I I won't change it just because my initial instinct is in Hoyt, so I'll go with Hoyt. Okay. Mm. So two two Hoyt Wilhelms. Let's see. Um, uh, Cowboy Jack says uh, number two. Um, number two. Uh, so I think he's saying he's going number two. I think he's going uh, yeah, could yeah. be, could be. Or could he's be. having three drinks at the same time. That's right. Uh, Bubble Pug says Jim Cott. Uh, Chad M says Hoyt Wilhelm. Uh, Mr. Soup says uh, wants to say Hoyt, but doesn't not quite Ooh. sure. Uh, Colin says Hoyt Wilhelm? Question mark. Remember, uh, it's not in question form. <laughs> this is in Jeopardy. <laughs> Who is Hoyt Wilhelm? <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, actually, he, he <laughs> it stuck with he actually had Bartolo Colon before, but definitely, yeah, de- <laughs> it's a trick, <laughs> yeah. Um, but even was he early, wasn't early. playing in 1986, all right, exactly, exactly. Uh, and the answer is brrr, it is actually Hoyt Wilhelm, yeah. Um, Hoyt Wilhelm, who hit a home run in his rookie year, 1952. Holds the record for pitching in the most games, 1,070. Yeah. So, and uh, when I looked up his sta- his stats, I was actually surprised that he was actually a, kind of a 500 pitcher, uh, 228 saves uh, back in the days when saves weren't really uh, coveted. Uh, but yeah, played for a lot of teams here, eight-time All-Star a world championship um in the uh, for the 54 uh what was it the new york giants the Giants, right? yeah the Indian, so yeah. uh two-time uh era leader pitched a no hitter which i totally forgot about in 58 and an eighth ballot a uh, hall of famer yeah so and uh as you see right there a knuckleballer kevin oh, was a knuckleballer. 21 years there you go that was your that was your pitch the knuckleball yeah. yes <laughs> But yeah, these are super underappreciated players that you know you don't talk about very much. Um, but I'm glad that we get to talk about that. Quite the journeyman, because that's an era where you're not changing team to team that much. Right, you know what yeah, I mean? Right. This is, this, you know, most. I mean, when did free agents even start? I was like, that was like right on the end of his career. You know? Yep. And and look at that. He came out to came out to the Angels and then uh, went back to Atlanta, Chicago. Like he he went around and then back to the Braves. So, um, and I forgot that he ended with the Dodgers as well. Uh, yeah. So in, very interesting. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what a conspiracy. Everybody knows big sexy. Yeah. Um, of course. I'm of course. sorry. It's not because he hit that home run in San Diego. That was not his first at bat. All right. That, that home run <laughs> in San Diego is one of the best. It's the best. Yep. Great moment yeah. in baseball. That, that was, that was a lot of fun. All right. What? Rookie led the American League in strikeouts in 1980. Oh, look at this, Kevin! All over. Oh yeah, 84. Oh, this, is my man. Peak. this is my peak. I I don't, <laughs> I don't even want to see the choices. I don't want to see the choices because I'm like, wow. I I you know I saw this and I'm just like, wow. I can't believe. Uh, I wonder if you would be tripped up by this or if this would be in your wheelhouse. Obviously, in your wheelhouse. I'm. So, I mean, if I'm wrong, then I'm gonna be like, oh, I mean, you're okay. off, but. To me, well, it's pretty obvious who it is, but let's see, let's see if you can uh, decipher from this: Roger Clemens, Mark Langston, Ron Romanek, or Mark Gubaza. <laughs> uh, we have a we have a Randy Poffo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I believe that he yeah, he was in Major League Baseball like in '84, but then went to WWF at that yes. time. Yes, yes, uh, and uh, was later the genius. What, what, no, that's not the genius, sir. That's Randy. Randy. Poffo. That's it, Randy Poffo, not Lanny. Oh, Randy Poffo. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I saw it in my head. That's what I wanted. It, I wanted it to be Lanny Poffo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can laugh because half of these four are Angels broadcasters. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm going to go with Mark Gubiza. Ooh. Well, I, I mean, if, if I'm as right as I say I am, you're 
50% right, except you have the wrong mark and the wrong angel broadcaster. That'd be Mark Langston with the Seattle Mariners, I believe. Wow. Well, everybody, <laughs> everybody's going with Bartolo Colon. He is, <laughs> he's, a, he's a fan favorite. Bartolo. <laughs> fan favorite. <laughs> We're at the Bartolo Colon show. Yeah, Colin says uh, Marguza. Hope it's another lucky guess. And hey, I think you answer. spelled Gubazov's name wrong, man. Come on. I think I think that I might I might have yeah. Oh, is that what it says on the card? I believe so. Is that how they spell on the card? Oh, you have to find because I was saying I thought there's a C in there because I'm like there's it's missing a, a letter. There. Yeah, I mean, oh, funny. You're, abso- just... you're absolutely right. You're absolutely oh. right. Okay. I did. I did spell it wrong. Thank you. I appreciate. I thought that. it was the card that did it. I was like, yeah. "Come on, clicks. Gubik. So okay, yeah, yeah. Um, as Americans, we always shorten uh, things. We always uh, that 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 is my fault. I will admit that. The so, uh, and the answer is, it is Mark Langston Good who job, was with yeah. Seattle at that time. Yeah. Seattle. So Kevin, I mean, like eighty four. Like you said, it was your. That's I your mean, team. this is what. That's when I was going to Angel Games as a season ticket holder. You know what I mean? Yeah. So sometimes at games, you know, I would just get cards. I'd be just looking at cards in between innings and or doing my homework. You know, back when I was in like, you know, well, they that's amazing right? that you did your homework at the game. <laughs> I, I, I had to. If I was getting my homework done. I had to do it before the game. We get there, yes. you know, like during batting practice. That's too funny. And yeah, once. Um, because we sat up top, the wind actually blew one of my papers over the over the thing to the to the field. <laughs> so that was the fun one. Explained to my teacher the next day. I'm like, yeah, I lost the paper. It, it flew over the barrier at the Angel game. That's amazing. <laughs> That's even better than the dog ate my homework. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, I mean, um, you know, Langston didn't play until 1990 um, for the Angels. So yeah. yeah, he was, but he was uh, his pretty respectable. Uh, numbers yeah, for really him. really good for a few years there. And I didn't realize his... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I see three-time AL strikeout leader. That's probably only because of Roger Clemens. They didn't have more than that, you know? <laughs> You're having fun looking at all the, the stuff here for... <laughs> we have more Bartolo comments. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, stats are definitely de- yeah. Uh, decent yeah, for him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, like, who would he be compared to nowadays? So uh, like a lot of strikeouts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could tell he didn't play for very good teams. Look at that, that oh, win loss. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know? that's probably it too. That's a pretty rough period for the, Oh, he's actually on the 98 Padres. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So he's probably a big part of that as well. And he the one thing the, I didn't, so he, got, re- he got to play the world series. Very good. I didn't realize, I mean, looking at the pictures of him, I didn't realize that he had kind of like a Dontro Willis type of, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, yeah. I didn't like leg kick yeah. there. I, I, that's yeah. amazing. That's the way, that's the way if I, I wish I would have known about like a huge leg kick or something like that. I wish I would have known about that. I would have definitely employed that back when I was playing. I, I <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I'm sure physically it was probably hard to keep that up but to yeah. do that all the time. Um, but yeah. Um, when did this become the CIA show? Conspiracy against Cologne. I, I like that he put the accent over there. Very, very, yeah, that was good. very accurate. Very nicely done. All right. So that is the uh, show we had for you tonight. Uh, if you like what we're doing here at the Beer Baseball Blog and the Beer Baseball Blogcast, uh, please consider uh, going to our Patreon on Beer Baseball. And uh, we have an Etsy store that you can uh, buy some cool stuff and we get it out to you very quick. And I've also been sending out some uh, other little goodies uh, if you go there. Here is our uh, social media. Here is our Twitter, our Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, Kevin Lyons, do you have anything that you want to promote? Yeah, first off, I mean, I said at the beginning of the show, if you saw, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lock and Low, L-O-K-N-L-O-L-L. Or as I say every week, Find your minor league team that's affiliated with your major league teams. Support them. We want them to succeed. But support your local brewery. I also want to put over uh, Shane Barkley. He was uh, on our uh, Japanese baseball hoppy hour. He works for Japan Ball. And uh, I actually won. If you could sell me, I could show you some stuff I got. Yeah, um, please. He sent me some autographed cards. And they were oh, – look at these angels I got here. Let me see if all these podcasts are these guys. Look at Look at this guy. Oh my gosh. Ryan Bood. Um star rookie, Mr. Um Reggie Willits. Oh wow. I love Reggie Willits, man. Yeah. 
uh, I'm, I'm saving this. This is the best angel one here. Look at this guy. You know this guy? Scott Spezio. Yes. yes. Check that out. Scott Spezio. And this one he specifically mentioned. This is uh, Sam Fold, who was from Stanford, but he actually now is the GM for the Philadelphia Phillies. So That's that was right. a really cool one. Yeah. That's and right. And since it's Japan ball travel, um, what they were doing was they were giving away this book called Bonsai Babe Roof, which I still really want to read. It's about Babe Roof's time over there. And this is the consolation prize I got. And he sent me like a base, a couple of Japanese cards too. He sent me this one of uh, Sadaki uh, Yoshimura. But this one, this is, this is a really interesting one. I want to read more about this guy. So this is a guy named Ken uh, Kitsuse who actually played in America and looks like this is like – hundred years ago or so. And this yeah. card is actually a custom made card that this guy made. Oh, uh, how cool. Yeah. Uh, this is a guy named Rob uh, Fitz, F I T T S. He is actually making like a book about an introduction to Japanese baseball cards. You can get the book. You can look him up on Rob Fitz.com. That's R O B F I T T S.com. Or if you want to learn more about Japanese baseball, you should definitely look up Japan ball. That's a great hot PR that we did too. If you want to learn yeah. about that, um, you can look him up on Japan at Japan Ball Travel on Instagram, japanball.com for more info. Hopefully, fingers crossed, next year's Japan. And if so, I'm definitely going to look them up to help get to some games. Yeah, I mean, super cool. We we became fast friends. It was just from being on a on a hoppy hour. And uh, I, at the time, I think that he was kind of, uh, kind of tweaking the things that he was doing. He's doing yeah. a lot of fun stuff. I was really glad to see him reach out to you. Uh, I love that Scott Spezio card because I have, even though you guys love Scott Spezio from for 2002, yes. I actually love Scott Spezio for 2006. Yep. Um, the, one of the worst baseball teams ever to make and win the World Series in 2006 was the St. Louis Cardinals. Scott Spezio hit like a triple like late in the season and uh, actually got the Cardinals into the playoffs. Uh, Spezio is awesome. Uh, he wound up kind of melting down a couple of years later. Yeah, uh, but, uh, I don't talk about that. Yeah, it was kind of unfortunate, but um, but yeah, I lo I love him um, as well. And I I I compare the Angels to the Cardinals all the time. You guys have a lot of uh, we we all have a interesting parallels uh, in our seasons and stuff like that. We're we're usually kind of like the same. Uh, you just have a bunch more championships than, than the Angels, all right? Yeah, but that was all before we were alive, you know? It's no, like, no, like, get out. Come on. Uh, I mean, honestly, like, okay, so in my lifetime, uh, 82, uh, 2006, 2011. So that's three. Oh, that's, hey, that's two, two more, more than, than my team has in, in the but last. But still, but still. You know, I've been around over 100 years, all right? Come on. <laughs> <That's> great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Angelo, did you want to promote anything? Yeah, so uh, – Thank you guys again for tuning in episode 47. Uh, it's been awesome. It's been a great run and we're going to continue moving forward. Uh, but you can, uh, don't forget to tune in each and every Saturday on the beer baseball YouTube channel for beer and break with Angelo. Uh, this, uh, and you can also catch me every Monday night on my personal Facebook page. So facebook.com slash Angelo Trinidad music for Monday night rip, where I uh, open up some, pack randomness so come join and hang out watch i also typically do mail day monday and i realize i have nothing coming in the mail next week so right before this broadcast i fra frantically uh purchased some stuff on ebay so <laughs> did you have a beer <laughs> while you did that yeah and, and uh, uh, buy some cards yeah. and when i when, when i'm not here on the beer baseball broadcast or opening packs you can find me on the twitch stream of big teach 45 uh, at Big Teach 45, twitch.tv slash Big Teach 45, playing Call of Duty Warzone Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So thank you guys for your support. And uh, please continue to, to watch the Bear and Break videos and support the uh, live stream. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. And uh, wow, can you believe that we are rapidly coming to a year of this? Year. This is so fun. Crazy. And so, the season starts in a week. Isn't that crazy? I, know, I can't believe that. Like, What? Yeah, I, I I have to I have to come down on Kevin. Are we are we doing fantasy baseball this year? Oh, that's right. I forgot. Oh shoot, I'm gonna have to figure that out quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I have, yeah. I have a dra I have a draft on Sunday, so please send me who you think I should be drafting. It's a keeper league, oh. 
So I don't start drafting until uh, the sixth round because we had six keepers. Oh. So please, if there's any uh, any people performing uh, that, that you've been watch, keeping your eye on during spring training, please send them my way, and I will be sure to yeah. add them to my prospective draft list. Yeah. Or uh, oh. for uh, Touch My Haney. That's my team. Oh, my God. Cowboy <laughs> Jack wants to sign up for fantasy. That will be... That would be there. We go. <laughs> well, there we go. As, as I like to say, uh, I have a lot of fantasies. None of them involve baseball. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> or cow, or cowboy. See, it's rotisserie <laughs> baseball. <laughs> we like rotisserie baseball. <laughs> So thank you so much. We'll see you here next uh, Tuesday. We'll be here at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, always a pleasure. Thanks, guys, so much. We will see you next week. Good night, everyone. Take care.